to continue their climb away from the foot of the table. But the Mariners are just nine matches from immortality. A possible treble very much on the cards if they can maintain the rage and make it seven wins from the last eight. Wellington Phoenix's late win over Melbourne victory yesterday has put the pressure back on Mark Jackson's team. But if they can respond today, they will return to the top of the ladder with just two games to go. A little earlier this season, the Mariners blew Western away with three first half goals and one in the second in Gosford. Uh, this, of course, is a much more resilient Western United these days, as they showed when coming from two goals down to beat the Bulls here last week. It's the start of a huge night of football on Paramount Plus. Headline, of course, by the Sydney Derby. A little bit later on, Brisbane and Newcastle also in action. And the Mariners rated as pretty strong favourites to win here today on a rather cool afternoon. 19 degrees at the moment in the west of Melbourne. As we check out the team news, a couple of changes for Western United, headlined by the absence of Daniel Pena, who has not recovered from the groin problem sustained against MacArthur. So Matt Grimaldi, fresh from signing a new three-year deal this week, comes in, while Koda Kador replaces the suspended Josh Risden at right back. Tomoki Imai remains on the sidelines with a ban as well. So Kane Vidmar continues alongside James Donachie in the heart of defence. Then there are four academy graduates on the bench, including Oliver Laval, who made his senior debut just last week. Ben Garuccio wearing the captain's armband for the first time in the absence of Josh Risden and Tomoki Imai. He hit the crossbar at this venue last week against MacArthur. Danny Vukovic is opposite number. Far more experienced in the captaincy stakes. And there are a couple of changes for the Mariners as well. Jacob Farrell and Alu Kual are both away on international duty with the Oli Roos. So Harrison Steele deputises at left back and Jing Reese returns at the point of the attack. Brian Kaltak plays his 50th game in the competition for the club. Angel Torres has 15 goals in all competitions and he could yet chase down Jason Cummings' seasonal club record of 21 set last season. And the Mariners have a very strong looking bench, including imports Ronald Barcelos and Ryan Edmondson. Well, Michael Docker has been successfully converted from a right back to a goal scoring midfielder. His late winner against Wellington last week, earning the Mariners a precious three points. But the Phoenix keep responding, so the Mariners must go again today. John Aloisi, of course, spent a year as a player with the Mariners, helping the club reach the 2008 Grand Final. Tonight, he takes charge of his 213th National League match, putting him joint 16th in the all-time list alongside the legendary Len McKendry. Mark Jackson, of course, in his first season, and what a season it's been so far in Australia for him. The Mariners have lost just eight of his 35 matches in all competitions. Referee today, Jonathan Barrero. Andrew Lindsay and Joey Lee will run the lines. Adam Bavchar, the fourth official. And Lara Lee is in charge of the VAR if required. Josh Nisbet, Australia's newest socceroo. Playing in that more attacking role again today. Alongside Jim Reese. So it's Western United in the green and black stripes who get us underway. The first of two games in four days in Tarnit, Adelaide, the visitors on Tuesday. But today it's the Mariners who have silverware in mind, Grace Gill. Well, good afternoon, Simon, and thank you. Well and truly a top and tail story for this afternoon's fixture. 
Western United only having won as many as the Mariners have lost. And so often as we say at this end of the season, so much riding on this result. There's the recent form guides. Western United finding some points late in the campaign to try and drive them away from what would be a first ever an unwanted wooden spoon. Angel Torres with the bleach blonde hair these days. And uh, you pointed out some information that you got from uh, the boys at Coast FM pre-game, Grace, which uh, rightly states, at least we think it is, that if the Mariners win today, they will secure not only a top two finish and Asian Champions League football next season. Of course, Wellington are not eligible to compete. And the club championship, which combines both the men's and women's. That's a lovely little flick from Michael Docker to set Storm Rue away down the right. Then he ran into traffic, tied it up nicely by Kane Vidmar. Well, we talk about so much riding on these results. Finals football, momentum. Western United with a fantastic result last weekend against MacArthur. Come from behind story. At home, they'll be looking to continue that for Central Coast. It's just a bit on the back of this one. Here's Ben Garuccio. Touched by Riku Danzaki, who had the honour of being the first Western United player to score at this new regional football facility. Which obviously we hope will be the precursor to the main stadium, which is promised to be delivered by season 25-26. Part of a general redevelopment of the area. Mainly countryside at the moment, as you saw from our pre-game shots of the sheep and the kangaroos but it's the footballers we're watching here this afternoon Michael Docker just out muscle by Dan Zaki who wanted the ball back quick smart and it is a pity Grace from John Aloisi's point of view that Weston didn't find their recent form, just one loss in the last six, which was to Adelaide United a little bit earlier on in the season. Otherwise, they might have been in contention for the finals, but they've just left their run a bit too late. Yeah, it's been exactly that. A late run into the season, some good form, some good goal scoring, which they've needed across the course of the year as well. And if you recall last season too, they had a few results to pull them off the foot of the table. And not a bad finish in the end, but it hadn't necessarily been the story of the entire the entire rounds of the competition. Yeah, they've scored 10 goals in the last four matches, but only 29 all season, which means they are still easily the lowest scorers in the competition. The Mariners, of course, among the highest with 42. Here's Brian Kaltak. Game number 50 for him in the competition today. It's uh, rather skewed off the left peg of Dan Hall, which presents the ball back to Western United. James Donaghy. He also hit the crossbar against MacArthur last week. This is young Koda Kadur, deputising for Josh Risden at right fullback. Serving his third ban of the season today, Josh Risden, 11 yellow cards picked up more than any other player in the competition. Sent long by Donaghy, was chested down by Caltag, but presented it straight to Ruse. And now Riku Danzaki with Ben Garuccio bombing on down the left. Hung it up towards the back post. Nobody there for Weston apart from. Matt Grimaldi, who races to retrieve it. Sergei in a little bit of space and onside. In towards Riku Danzaki, a block by Dan Hall. And Garuccio just couldn't quite set himself and got right underneath it. It's a nice sweeping move there from Western United. Look to play on the counter attack and get forward early. Some good hold up play from Michael Ruse and this recycled ball in. Riku Danzaki's done really well just to arrive late and nip in front of Docker. 
almost catch him unawares. Ultimately, Garutra not able to get his head over the shot. But it's moments like that that Western United are plenty capable of producing. It's just the final point. Turn back by Max Ballard. Got his first goal for the club recently, Ballard against Melbourne City, but Mariners in a bit of a hole there. They managed to get a throw in out of that off Danzaki. Counter back to Danny Vukovic. Weston looking to press high. Aaron is good enough to get out. Nisbet and has Torres beyond him, but he was tracked by Koda Kadur. Torres. Caltech. Harrison Steele enjoying a rare outing due to Jacob Farrell's Oli Roo's involvement. It's only his third start of the season, Harrison Steele. No way forward for Ballard. Nicely flighted by Kaltak. Torres plays it on quickly for Nisbet. Torres again. through Brad Tapp. Forward by Kaltak. And wide it goes here for Storm Room. <coughs> Mariners comfortably keeping the ball. Well, they were up until that point. And uh, cleared out of play by Thomas Hewitt Bell. He returned last week against the Bulls after missing five matches with a finger injury. Well, Western United pinned well and truly in their own defensive half. All 11 bodies behind the ball, just allowing Central Coast to get a good touch on the ball, some really contained possession. Just trying to pick apart the right moment to try and find that piercing ball through the defence of Western United. Not dissimilar to how they started last week too against MacArthur. Just biding their time, discipline shape. Now it's a bit of room for Matt Grimaldi to advance into. Wide right is Lockie Wales. Wasn't a good cutback. Easily swept away and out for a throw by Brad Tapp. scored many goals this season, Lockie Wales, but uh, he has created 49 chances. Which puts him in the upper echelons of the A-League stats. Jing Reese, meantime. It's good tracking back by Garuccio. And Hewitt Bell back to Wales on the right-hand side. Pasquale. Vidmar. And Garuccio. Plenty of cars still uh, arriving in the background. Of course, this is first and a double header. The A League women's in action later in finals football against the Newcastle Jets, who are making their first appearance in the end of season playoffs since 2018. So, a real feast of football for the locals here today, Grace. Yeah, brilliant. At home as well, Tarnit for Western United. Real opportunity in afternoon to showcase their new home stadium, home venue. Again, that high press from uh, Western. Errant touch from Torres. Kane Vidmar. His father, Tony, is... Uh, about to lead the Oli Roos into that AFC Under-23 Asian Cup. Which means that quite a few clubs this weekend 
and over the next couple of weekends will be missing some of their key players. Mariners without two of theirs today in Quall and Farrell. That's a bit loose from Brian Caltuck, unlike him. Garuccio just having to check the run as the ball was played behind him. Got to take the ball first time. Vidmar. Rather wasteful ball by Kane Vidmar. You can say the same about Storm Roo. Catalogue of errors from both teams. Here's Garuccio. And the ball spins out into the path of Riku Danzaki. Pasquale. The Mariners resolute in defence. As they have been for much of the second half of the season. Ten clean sheets they've kept this campaign, all in the last 18 matches. After that uh, rather rocky start to life under... Mark Jackson. It's been a remarkable renaissance. Oh, it has well and truly. They've come good. Ten clean sheets, a league high. There's opening passage from both sides. Just a little poor in ball retention. Pass is not quite hitting the mark. Opening ten or so minutes. Both sides just feeling each other out and trying to find a passageway through. You like it. Square by James Donerke. Fitmar. Garuccio driven back by Docker. Hewitt Bell with time to try and pick out a target, and he did find Lachlan Wales. Couldn't really control the header. Just that one chance so far, which fell the way of Ben Garuccio on the half volley. Bit of space for Docker. And down goes Jing Reese, but there's no foul by Donerke. Pasquale able to turn. Michael Roos, who got a double last week against the Bulls. Danzaki darting in field and opening up the space for Lachlan Wales on the right. Attacking Harrison Steele. And only finding Danny Vukovic. Yeah, that final touch there from Lockie Wales. Almost allowing the ball just to get a little too far away from him so that his cross, he was really reaching to try and wrap his boot around the ball. A little skinny and Danny Vukovic was able to easily claim. Brad Tapp for the Central Coast. He's another one of the youngsters that has cemented what seems like a regular spot in midfield over the last month or so. Helped, of course, by the fact that Josh Nisbet is playing in that more advanced role. Again, the press from Weston. Forcing the Mariners back. Foul on Michael Docker. Quickly taken free kick. And quickly shifted out wide towards Torres by Nisbet. And he'll run at Kador and gets beyond him. And the deflection provides the Mariners with a corner. Well, there's a bit of energy that's needed into this game. The opening 15 minutes, just a bit of an arm wrestle, but just a little flash of individual brilliance that we've seen time and time again from Torres across the course of the season. Puts his head down, takes his player on 1v1 and has that turn of pace. They can be tricky to defend against facing your own goal. There's the corner in towards the near post and Jim Reese trying to get a piece of it before Hewitt Bell dropped greatly on the ball. A quarter of an hour played. First real threat from the Mariners. Yeah, 
And at those uncertain moments are one where the ball can just be prodded away. It fell almost to Jing Reese to do exactly that. Ultimately, Western United managed enough to steer it out of danger. Pasquale. Grimaldi. Pasquale had a little look to see where Angus Thurgate was. Fighting Kane Vitmar forward. Mariners have everybody behind the ball. Back by Kadour for Donaki. Danzaki. Finding Ben Garuccio. He's faced by Michael Docker and he finds room for the cross. Tied it up by Ballard at the near post. Good hold up play by Jing Reese. Torres maybe looking to float it over the top, which he's done beautifully into the path of Josh Nisbet. He might have to go on his own. There's only one runner that arriving late, who was Jing Reese. Touch back by Tap. Forwards, but wayward from Caltech. Grimaldi. And a tussle with Ballard. Apologies for the frog in the throat. Well, there's always going to be a conversation today around who slotted in in that left back position. For Farrell, I see the answer to that question has been Harry Steele. Perhaps we're a little more used to seeing in a midfield role, but can play in a fullback position as well. well he's defending Lachlan Wales here. Slips it through for Grimaldi. Good stretch by Steele. Needed that touch to prevent it from getting through to Lockie Wales, who is well positioned. Again, errors in possession from both sides, but. At the end of it, Michael Roos comes away with the ball. It's Michael Roos. He would love to score against one of his former clubs. And the Mariners again got bodies, as they so often do, behind the ball. And Roos was denied. Well, he certainly got a piece of that, Michael Roos. Had a look up, a little shift of weight, drop of the shoulder. Connected well, but there was a wall of Mariners denying him the opportunity. Perhaps just a little frustration settling in for both teams. Wayward passes, not sticking, not being played on the correct side of the body, just inviting a bit of pressure. Oh, might be a clash of heads there. Jonathan Barrero blows in favour of Western United, Sebastian Pasquale and Brad Tapp. Both went for the ball in a full-blooded fashion. Donaghy Square for Vidmar. Closed down by Jing Reese, but it'll be a Western United throw. Well, thankfully, both players are OK. Yeah as though there's a blow to the back of Pasquale's head. Yeah, those ones can be really tricky and dangerous as well. Good to see him back on his feet. No malice for me, the player meant you could see eyes for the ball only. And he was up quickly, Sebastian Pasquale. Otherwise, I did wonder whether they might have done the old concussion protocols. <laughs> 20 minutes played in Tarnit. Few chances at either end so far. Storm room. Docker. And tap for steel. And 
Dan Hall taking over. He's being strongly linked with uh, a move to Auckland next year. Dan Hall. Brian Kaltak's name has been mentioned in dispatches with that new club as well. And with uh, Angel Torres' agent saying he's not going to stay with the Mariners. Could be another clear out. Not of their own making. In the off-season, money they dealt with the last one pretty well. Well, they have. But when you're in the shop window like that, getting the results, producing the kind of play that we have seen from the Mariners in recent weeks, you can understand why. Here's Torres. Steel. Western United back in numbers, well set defensively. Torres. Little dart in field gets rid of one defender. They're just looking for movement, but space is at a real premium for both teams. Good climb by Kaltak. Now, yeah, but a space for Michael Docker. Who didn't need a second invitation over the top it goes and that gives us the chance to say good afternoon to Michael Zapponi who's pitch side for us thanks Simon yeah it's um, Mark Jackson not too happy uh, with his team at the moment just yelling out uh, instructions to them especially to, to get the ball wide and use uh, some of those wide spaces uh, more often in the first 20 minutes they haven't been able to create many great opportunities the conditions here are perfect i must say uh, no wind at all to speak of and uh, as you can see it is still a construction site here on that wide shot uh, extraordinary coming here my first time here today and uh, literally roads which are still under construction and uh, dirt roads on the way here kangaroos as you saw in the pre-game and sheep but well done to everyone here at western united because they are hell-bent on playing here at the tail end of this season and it's a great setup for them thanks Zappa. and as mentioned only the first part of what is going to be a much much bigger precinct hopefully including that stadium well, I think so. Uh, undeniably, the pitch is looking in fantastic con condition. More to come from this facility, we know that much. But as John Aloisi has spoken about a lot in recent weeks, just to have a home base Absolutely. for the team to be is so important. Danzaki tap got a foot in back up for Squally and then Garucho all the way back to Hewitt Bell Pasquale oh, was uh, pickpocketed on the blind side Mariners could so easily have been in there. It sort of has that feeling about it, doesn't it? Just waiting on a mistake, waiting on an errant pass, an error for the team to capitalise. Mariners almost able to nip in and make something of that one. A couple of shouts from the Western United players as well for a bit of a late contact from Jing Reese into Kane Vidmar. But it has been a really cagey opening 25 minutes. The game's coming thick and fast, of course, for both these clubs. Western entertain Adelaide on Tuesday. And the Mariners have the long trip to Kyrgyzstan play Abdish first leg of their AFC Cup zonal final here's Garucho that's going to be a corner for Western United but I guess from the Mariners point of view it's the position you want to be in playing every few days but trophies just over the horizon and if they were to win the treble goodness me 
what an achievement that would be. A lot of work to do still before that becomes reality. There's a whole melee of players crowding Danny Vukovic. Keep your hands off each other is the message from Jonathan Barrero, the referee. <laughs> Good luck with that. Here's the corner from Lockie Wales. And Jing Reese up but not away at the near post. And Vukovic with a safe enough claim. Well, you can hear loud and clear the chat coming through. Numbers just swarming around Vukovic in goal there, trying to put him off. Nothing, much too, nothing too much happening rather from the corner. Michael Roos just looking to get in the way, to antagonise. who's popped up on the right-hand side, but his first touch presented the ball straight to Ben Garuccio. I'm sure the Mariners will have uh, watched the Wellington against Melbourne victory game with keen interest yesterday and probably a few groans from their camp when Finn Sermon scored the late winner, although it has been given as an own goal, I see. Lockie Wells driving into the box. Here's Ben Garuccio. It's well defended by Rue. Still there for Garuccio, though. Mariners a bit slow to close him down. Those three points for the Knicks, putting the pressure right back on the Mariners today. They've got to try and keep pace with the Phoenix. Who no doubt in turn, Grace, are crowded around their TV screens this afternoon. Well, you'd hope so. And it's the exact ending to the season that we want to see for the neutral, in particular, the tight table. Three points meaning more than ever before. Still undecided, the top six. Good stretch by Danzaki to reel that one in. As Wales in close attendance, Squally uses him now. Fergate, and it'll cut back for Garuccio. It's good crisp passing from Western United. Lockie Wales goes down in the box. Brad Tapp with the challenge, but Jonathan Barrero says that is simulation on the part of Lachlan Wales and reaches for the yellow card. Well, there were some really tidy little touches for the Western United team as they made their way into the 18-yard box. A nice little give and go from Lockie Wales, but he knew the contact was coming. The ball was well and truly gone by that point. Well, I'm not necessarily saying I think it's a penalty, because I don't. But I'm not sure it's worthy of a yellow card. There's certainly a bit of contact, but Taps just stood his ground. I don't know whether Lockie Wells threw himself to the ground, but maybe you saw it differently, Grace. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's a penalty. But if it's not a penalty and he's gone to ground, then the question being, is there enough contact for simulation or otherwise, and referee Jonathan Barrero has deemed exactly that. I mean, the positive part for Western United there was the tidy touches, the good movement around the outside of the 18-yard box, the ball speed. And just that swiftness of play that they need a little bit more in the final third. Ballard. Almost crowded out there, Max Ballard. He's done really well to find Michael Docker. He has Rue outside. And he's offside, unfortunately, for the Central Coast. Let's have another look at that uh, well, penalty shout and ultimate yellow card for Lockie Wales. 
Well, perhaps a little tough on Wales for the yellow. Undoubtedly contact. I think the ball was away from the play at that point in time. Yeah, I don't think it's a penalty, but anyway. Another one playing against his former club, of course, Lockie Wales. Started his A-League career. And Gosford, the boy from Terrigal. And Weston have certainly created the better openings. A little bit flat in an attacking sense from the Mariners so far. Yeah, to my eye, it's been a real arm wrestle. Both teams just sitting back in compact defensive shape, not looking to spring forward or high press too much. So just waiting for the opportunity to look for a counter. It's not a warm afternoon by any means. Good conditions for football. Chested down by Jim Reese, and then he was a little bit late on the follow through, but uh, Jonathan Barrero has allowed the advantage because Weston have got the ball through Riku Danzaki. It's good refereeing that. Lockie Wales setting himself for the shot, which is blocked. They will reset through Kadour on the right. Again, again, again. Pasquale. They have a little threaded ball through for Thurgate. Who found room for the cross. Danny Vukovic had its measure. It's a good advantage play there, though, by the ref. Yeah, really smart play, and that's what the teams want as well. Instead of having things held up and resetting in their own defensive half, they'd much rather that advantage played, and ultimately what ended up in a chance for Western United. Lovely little through ball from Pasquale. Beautiful weight behind that. Mariners throw. John Aloisi encouraged by what he's seen. Mariners who've won six of their last seven matches, they're only lost to Sydney. <laughs> Their only losses in the last 20 games have both been to Sydney FC. Last team to beat them, other than a Portale side, was Brisbane back in November last year. They've already surpassed last season's points total of 44. Just searching to find their rhythm a bit here in Tarni. Long ball forward over the top by Hall, and Nisbet is onto it. Hey! Hewitt Bell out to smother. He managed to get between two defenders there, Josh Nisbet, with that low centre of gravity. Yeah, and really smart first-time ball over the top as well from Dan Hall. We're speaking about this low defensive block that both teams are playing. But just to turn the other team around to try and catch them off guard, which that delivery almost did exactly that. Just changes things up a little bit. Garuccio. <laughs> Hewitt Bell calling for it. Another one of the ex-Central Coast Mariners Brigade. Spent a portion of his earlier career in Gosford, the Western United goalkeeper. Caltac, very neat turn under pressure. Michael Ruse keeping the Mariners defenders honest. That press again, this time applied by Thurgate. And Vukovic forced to go long as the sun peeks through the clouds. It's good hold up play yet again by Jing Reese. He's had to work really hard on a few occasions now, just grappling alongside Kane Vidmar. That battle sizing up really nicely. 
Caltac assessing all options. He's not happy with any of them as yet. It's a real game of cat and mouse, isn't it? Yeah, and you can see exactly what Western United are trying to do, block that midfield pass. Really condensed numbers in the middle. They're forcing the Mariners to try and play wide. Forcing quite a few turnovers as well. Torres, the latest to lose out. Pasquale ran into referee Barrero there for a minute. And the Mariners come away with the ball. Docker trying to float it into the path of Nisbet, which he's done so successfully. Nisbet went near post, and he wasn't too far away. The Mariners turn to threaten. Well, two times in as many minutes, the early ball over the top. This one, a delightful lofted pass from Docker. A little, little shift of the shoulder there from Josh Nisbet gets the shot away. But just slightly changing the dynamic of the game, looking forward earlier, turning the defence of Western United around. It's causing them a few headaches. Just the two goals this season for Josh Nisbet. Wasn't too far away from a third. This is Michael Docker, who's regularly been on the score sheet of late. Nisbet's wide right this time. Looking to go across the penalty area. Pasquale was there. That'll be cut out though by Harrison Steele. Torres going around the outside and clipping the ball in. Attack. Again, taking his time before playing the ball. Nisbet. Steele. It's good football by the Mariners. Just ran out of room, Josh Nisbet. And Hewitt Bell with the early launch looking to catch the Mariners unaware defensively. Manny Vukovic out to sweep. Ballard. Really, the right ball for Angel Torres. Young Coda Cador's got a big task on his hands, trying to keep the Colombian quiet today. Mariners' top scorer, of course, with 13. Lachlan Wales. Space for Garuccio to attack, and Wales is bombing on beyond him. Oh, yeah. And in a break for Lockie Wales. Seen behind at the near post by Dan Hall. Another Western corner. That's good forward running there from Lockie Wales. Worked hard to make the overlapping run around Garuccio just to provide an option. It just puts a little doubt in the Mariners' mind about who exactly to close down. And again, there's a crowd of players around Danny Vukovic. Makes sight lines difficult for goalkeepers. Wales' delivery. And again, Danny Vukovic didn't even break sweat, did he? Just a slight shout. Keep up. That's me. Well, he makes light work of it, <laughs> doesn't he? Vastly experienced. Really cool at the back, Danny Vukovic, as he so often is. They've not conceded many from corners this year, and unsurprisingly so. They have been harried into mistakes by an energetic Western United performance in this first half. Which has just under five minutes to run, plus stoppages now. Third game. Donaghy. Kadour. Cut out 
by Brad Tapp in the first instance. Mariners retreats into their low defensive block. Grimaldi spinning away from Torres. All the way back for Kane Vidmar. Garuccio. Squally, Fergate shifted on quickly. Adore deflected. Corner ball. Ultimately, an awkward one for the Mariners to deal with. It's good build up by Western United. The run inside, finding that pass through, and this vision too from Angus Thurgate to release Kador. Well, it's a good opportunity. Good area of the field. Just desperation stakes there from Steel getting a last lunging challenge in. Danny Vukovic has caught pretty much everything from these deliveries. Wales whips it in. Didn't catch that one. It was uh, Macromaldi who was underneath it. Might drop here for Dan Zaki. Spins wide towards that far touch line where James Donachy picks it up. Fergate. Back out wide for Kador. Now Grimaldi. Squally working it wide to the right again. Are they wily enough to unpick this Mariners defense? Donaghy. Kador, Sergei, Grimaldi, good football by Weston, palmed away by Vukovic, another corner, it was nice, patient build-up from Western United. Yeah, lovely play there from Western United, you could hear the communication coming through from Vukovic throughout, asking for pressure to be put on the Western United players. And again, good forward movement from Sergei, as he so often does, into the final third. Now, Jonathan Barrero, that's uh, in conversation with Lara Lee and VAR for what we're not quite sure. So uh, that's been given the all clear, whatever it was about. And it's a corner for Ben Garuccio to deliver in towards the near post. Pasquale. Wales. Garuccio. Teasing cross. Storm Roo underneath it. Further clear by Docker. Dantaki. Claiming he got just a little nudge there from Docker. Himself has dropped to the turf. Got a whack to that right knee by the looks of it. Yeah, it looked like a sore one there for Michael Docker. Went quick to ground, just clutched at that right knee. Just that kick. Yeah, got a kick from Danzaki right on the kneecap. Ouch. Wales, it was the right idea, just a fraction too heavy for Matt Grimaldi. Yeah, the weight of the pass, just asking a little too much. Thumbs up from Matt Grimaldi. He was the difference maker last week for Western United, came on for an injured Daniel Pena. He's still unavailable today. Hasn't been quite as involved this opening 45 minutes for Western United, but nonetheless will grow into the game, the second half. Fantastic young players, Grimaldi. Into just the one additional minute at the end of the first half.
Jay Grace went a really good header. Nisbet shut down by Thurgate just at the crucial moment. Torres wins the 50-50. Both teams have just been able to get that crucial foot in at the right time. And as a result, chances have been hard to find for both. Steal for Torres. Nisbet, ball had already gone out. Throw in for Weston. And that is half time. A real arm wrestle this one. Josh Nisbet came closest for the Central Coast Mariners. Whereas at the other end, Koda Kadour had a shot deflected wide. Riku Danzaki has been busy. Danny Vukovic has fielded pretty much everything that's come his way. And generally, defences have been on top. So at half-time, in Tarni, it's goalless. Western United nil, Central Coast Mariners nil.
They're the young stars that have lit up the A-League. Fantastic finish from the Oli Roo. Now they'll be representing their country against the best in Asia. Here's Courtney Perkins with time and space and Jordan Courtney Perkins. The Oli Roos are chasing a spot in the Olympics at the AFC Under-23 Asian Cup. It starts April 15th and every game is live on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, it's a massive couple of weeks for Tony Vidbar's side in the Under-23 Asian Cup in Qatar. Can they qualify for the Olympics? Welcome to the Hungry Jacks Halftime Show. Here are some pictures live from the dressing rooms uh, in the new football facility here in Tarnit, home of Western United. A big double header coming your way this afternoon. First half action here in Tarnit. It was a tough one for both sides to find any openings and uh, best chance of the day coming to Josh Nisbet, uh, the newly crowned uh, Socceroo. Here are the Harvey Norman highlights. Simon and Grace calling the action. With the Mariners creating some good opportunities early. The instruction from Mark Jackson was to find the wide areas and to do that more and more throughout the first half. He'll be looking for more of that in the second.
Yeah, the crowd is starting to lift here at halftime. The, the drummers are making plenty of noise in front of the grandstand here. Great to see the children from the Western Victoria Football Academy as well out at Ballarat enjoying a game of six aside at halftime. Plenty more football coming your way here on Paramount Plus. Don't forget, to, after this one, as we head to the break, it's the Brisbane Roar taking on the Newcastle Jets. Okay. Again, the header from Aldred, the captain. Saved by Macklin Freak. Incredible. Well, how about that? To kick your team in the cop. Oh, clever from Reno Biscopo. Lovely return from Steins. This is great football. What a goal from the Jets. Reno Piscopo. Second half about to get underway in Tarni. No goals between these two in the opening 45 minutes. And uh, a change for both teams at the break. As you can see, in defence, Kane Vidmar has been withdrawn. And Zach Lisolaski is with us. And Ryan Edmondson has been introduced as well for the Central Coast Mariners at the expense of Jing Reese. So all change. And you would hope, Grace Gill, that uh, it would be all change in terms of the numbers of shots on goal because uh, they're pretty slim pickings in the first half. Well, if history is anything to go by, Simon, this next 45 minutes is going to be a little more interesting. Both teams, much better second-half teams in the way of goal scoring, particularly Western United. 
who struggled to find the back of the net in the first half. A reminder of uh, the two teams at kickoff today. A couple of changes for Western United. No Daniel Pena, no Josh Risden. Coda Cador coming in. As Western look to attack down the left hand side, Ben Garuccio. The return ball towards Garuccio is not the best. A couple of changes for the Mariners at the start of play today as well. Of course, Jacob Farrell and Alu Kual away on international duty. Harrison Steele deputising at left back. Jim Grease, who has now departed. Starting at the point of the attack, but it's now Ryan Edmondson for the Mariners. Even more of a physical presence, I guess, for Mark Jackson's team. Not that Jing Reese is any shrinking violence. That's not the right release from Harrison Steele. Good opening, potentially, that for the Central Coast. And you mentioned that. Uh, this little period in the game, Grace, is where Western do some of their best work this season. They've scored 10 goals in this little 15-minute block just after half-time, which is their best period in the game this season. And not too far followed by the final 15 minutes of play, but across the course of 90 minutes, 75% of Western United's goals come in the second half. So if that's anything to go by, we might be in for a little bit of a treat this second 45 minutes, Central Coast 2 don't mind a goal in their second half of football. And the way this one started, you sort of get the sense that there's just a little bit more energy yep. in this second bit. A little bit more tempo about the game. <laughs> At least there was. <laughs> Mariners, of course, have to go for it. Don't want to allow Wellington Phoenix to get away at the top of the league. Chasing the first premiership since 2011-12. Defending to do here though, Lockie Wales. Trying to tease his way past Harrison Steele. Didn't quite have enough in the kit back. That was well defended there from Harrison Steele. Didn't dive in, just stayed nice and low, picked his time, made the challenge. Lockie Wales can be a tricky customer. Only two goals this season for Lockie Wales. He normally contributes, well, around the five mark, so he's certainly due one. He hasn't scored since uh, netting one against Adelaide in November. Michael Docker fouled. Been in the wars once or twice this afternoon already, the Brazilian. by Rue, moved on quickly by Tap, and Nisbet had his legs taken from under him by Kadour. Free kick, Central Coast. Taken quickly too, Torres, who's been a little quiet so far. Square by Tap, Dan Hall stepping forwards, still going. A little flick from Nisbet, it almost came off for Torres. That was smooth from Dan Hall. Not Just bad from Nisbet either. Not at all. Really nice sweeping movement right up the middle of the park for the Mariners. Oh, mistake. Could open the door here. Nisbet squares it up. Ballard! Wrong foot. Thomas Hewitt Bell. And the Mariners hit the front. Five minutes into the second half. And Max Ballard has just his second goal for the Premiership Chasers. Well, there was a point of appreciation from Max Ballard on the Harvey Norman replay. A poor giveaway in the middle of the park from Pasquale, and the selflessness from Josh Nisbet to pick out a free Mariners player in the name of Ballard. The no-look pass, the first-time finish, 
It's a tidy clinical finish from the Mariners and you'd expect no less. Well, Josh Nisbet claims a ninth assist of the season. Max Ballard gets his name up in lights. He had to wait a long while for that first goal. He got it against Melbourne City just two games ago. Now it's two and three. And it's all really because of that error from Sebastian Pasquale. Far too casual in possession. It's just such a shame for Pasquale because he's been excellent in the middle of the park for Western United. A little unsung at times with the work he does do on the yes. ball. For just a moment, he got the ball caught under his feet. Mariners were able to spring and make the most of the opportunity. And we spoke in the first half, Simon, about the game having the feeling that it was waiting on an error. It was waiting on a mistake. And one side would have needed to capitalise on exactly that moment, which is what the Mariners have just done. And we know how good the Mariners are when they hit the front. It's the 14th time this season they've scored the first goal. The previous 13 have produced 12 wins and just one draw. It's a pretty good conversion rate. Oh, it's excellent. Haven't lost a single game when going ahead first. Good turn by Tap. And that's the as live ladder, which shows that if it stays this way, the Mariners will return to the top of the ladder. With just two games to go. Those two games for the Mariners at home to Adelaide and away to the Jets. With those AFC Cup ties against the team from the Kyrgyz Republic intertwined between them. They've still got a job to do here. And near post is Thurgate. Oh, is that a handball by Ballard? It certainly bounced up and struck the arm. Ballard will claim it was purely accidental and came off the opponent, but of course VAR are going to check this. Clearly strikes the arm of Max Ballard. Well, they're going to have to have a look. Accidental or otherwise, it did look to come off the elbow of Max Ballard. The Mariners didn't deal with the initial cross, found its way all the way through to Thurgate. We'll have another look at it here. Well, he hits the ball into Danzaki and it then rebounds up and clearly strikes the arm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Jonathan Barrera is asked to go and have a look at this one. And it would be so unfortunate for Ballard, but undeniably it comes off his arm. What is the verdict from Lara Lee in the VAR booth? Well, there can't be any doubt that the ball struck the arm. He's trying to clear the ball, isn't he? He's just played it straight into Danzaki and the rebound has spun up from a, quite a short distance away, it must be said as well. Western United fans, some of whom are on their feet in anticipation of a penalty being awarded. And could the Mariners hero only two or three minutes ago turn villain? The answer is no. Thoughts, great skill. Well, wrap your head around that one. We know that intent doesn't matter with a handball. We saw that last night in Adelaide against MacArthur. A late handball was given. Here's Wales. Cross deflected. Helped out by Docker. Retrieved well, though, by Pasquale. Wales. Donaghy. Pasquale. Nobody will have been wishing for the VAR to point to the penalty spot more than Sebastian Pasquale. It was his error that uh, opened the door for Max Ballard to get the opening goal of the game. Danzaki, 
third game. Nice turn and release. Ditto Macromaldi. Gansaki. Let's get off! Get off! Up and out by Caltech. Edmondson trying to snaffle possession for his team. But the pace is markedly quicker, isn't it, in the second half from both teams? Yeah, it certainly feels as though there's just a little bit more atmosphere about it. The crowd's filling out nicely. We know the women's game is to follow shortly thereafter. A result needed. Mariners holding just a narrow lead. But it's certainly been a more energetic opening stanza in this second half. Western United, of course, have their own reasons for wanting to win. They got off the foot of the ladder for the first time in 15 rounds with that win over MacArthur here last week. If they lose today, they'll be reliant on Melbourne City beating Perth tomorrow to avoid being dumped back into 12th spot. Unless they can turn things around here. Grimaldi. Donaghy. Kadour calling for it. And eventually, James Donaghy obliges. John Aloisi thought his team had the throw. Not so. And ultimately, for Kador there, you want that pass on the ground. Sort of bouncing up around his knees, just takes another half a second for him to bring that under control and invite a bit of pressure. It's a minor detail, but they're the kind of things that matter, especially when you're chasing a game. Under pressure from Michael Roos. Long from Vukovic, and now the chase is on. It's a good challenge from Kadur to prevent Josh Nisbet from linking up with Angel Torres. Living dangerously there, Weston. Yeah, that almost dropped a little too kindly for the Mariners, if not for a well timed challenge from Kadur. The game just starting to open up a few holes presenting themselves. Nisbet sliding it through and Angel Torres will get there. Edmondson waits in the middle. Nisbet alongside Torres. It's over the head of Edmondson. And Hewitt Bell will prevent the corner. Might have done a bit more with that, the Mariners. And on that occasion, just not the numbers in the box. There we go, nine assists. The most of any player in the competition this season, Josh Nesbitt. He's loving playing that more advanced role, isn't he? Well, he's really thrived there. And not just with the assists, he's providing a couple of goals himself across the course of the season. His chance creation is the highest in the league. It's not the best clearance from Hewitt Bell, but uh, Weston have... I was going to say got away with it, but Torres has just won the ball back. Caltech. Touch by Torres, but uh, beyond the reach of Nisbet. Wales. Can't quite break clear of Harrison Steele's steely grip. Ballard for Rue. Caltech. A little bit careless, but gets away with it. Torres. Coming more into the game, the Colombian. Docker. And they've got a man over here. Storm Rue. Across the face. Oh, and Angel Torres with a great chance to make it two, but he's blazed it wide. Oh, brilliant chance for the Mariners. That shot from Torres needed to make more of that. The pass from Torres to Docker in the first instance was excellent. Completely split the field in the Western United defence. 
On the first time of asking, I thought perhaps Rue would have taken a shot himself, and this one, well, Torres has absolutely tried to knock the leather off that. Well, that really would have made it a mountain to climb for Western United. No doubt John Aloisi will ask the question as to why that handball wasn't awarded as a penalty for his team. And I'll go back to the old cliche with regards to that uh, decision. Grace, we've seen them given. Oh, you're not wrong, Simon, you are not wrong at all. Strong run this from Garuccio. Eventually halted by Rue. Grimaldi. Final half an hour in Tarni. The A-League women's finals game between Weston and the Jets to follow here. In the men's competition, it's Brisbane against Newcastle and then the big Sydney derby later on, on Tembold and Paramount Plus. It's too heavy from Grimaldi. Otherwise, Matt Grimaldi's had a very impressive breakthrough season and uh, fully deserving, in my opinion, at least of that new extended deal that he signed this week. Yeah, very much so. He's particularly impressed when he has come off the bench in previous games. And as mentioned, it was last week's fixture when he replaced the injured Daniel Peña, where he made an instant impact to the outcome of that Western United result. Understand the club wanting to secure him for years to come. There's some of the early women's team who've arrived ahead of their big dates with the Newcastle Jets. Look nice and relaxed, don't they? Oh, a big game for them. First out supporting the men's team, as I'm sure the men's will do the same in return. team came from two goals down to beat MacArthur last week. But the Mariners are a very tough nut to crack once they get their noses in front. They've won their last four matches now against Western United, kept clean sheets in three of those four. Here's Torres. but starting to find a bit more room in which to make those combinations. Ballard's little give and go with Docker. Rue in position on the right to hang it up, but Edmondson had been drawn towards the near post. Not a single tackle made by Weston in the second half, and perhaps more crucially, no shots on goal. All the numbers favouring the Central Coast Mariners. I think fair to say the final third at either end has lacked a bit of quality today. In the 18-yard box, very few shots. Just the one shot on target for the Mariners that we saw as the first half wrapped up now they've just got the two but still for western united have not had a single shot on target that chance creation in the final third really lacking in today's game well they've got 25 minutes to turn things around very youthful bench today zach lisalaski already on the field and on the ball here we do have a couple of attacking weapons still in reserve, but missing the likes of Pena and also Nikita Rukovic here, who's got an injury as well. It's a bit light on at the moment, John Aloisi, in terms of depth. Yeah, really fair to say. 
rather depleted Western United side. Of course, we know Noah Bocic still out with his injury and Pena and Bocic, the leading goal scorers for Western United this season. So to not have those two leading the line, you do have to dig deeper into your, your ranks, your youthful ranks. Rami Najarine, another one that's uh, been out for quite some time. Steel. Okay, okay, okay. Angel Torres unable to control it. Some of the uh, Western United substitutes, which does include a little bit of experience as well in the shape of Stephen Lustica. Oliver Laval just going through in the foreground, made his debut for the last eight minutes against the Bulls last week. Here's one potential option as a striker. Here's Lockie Wales and Riku Danzaki puts it wide. Big chance for Western. Well, understatement right there. Huge opportunity for the side to equalise. A really swift move forward. First touch from Lockie Wales was excellent. This ball in as well, just evading the Mariners' defence, and Tenzaki cannot direct his shot goalward. Almost had Vukovic planted, but that is a fantastic opportunity. He got his first goal in Western Colours last week. Also had one disallowed at uh, that end of the stadium by VAR. Mariner sweep forward, Angel Torres running at pace, gets a corner off Donaghy. Well, with two defenders to beat, does well to get a corner out of the opportunity. Angel Torres just looking to turn on the afterburners. Would have been a tricky angle to wrap his boot around. Final quarter of the game. Just the Mariners' second quarter of the contest. It's been far from a free-flowing Central Coast. They have the goal that they wanted. Dockers flat delivery with pace. And Hall first to react. And that deflection will give the Mariners their third quarter. There's the man at the moment, Max Ballard. Going to be off to Portugal next season to play for Porto Monense. They're currently struggling against the drop from the top division in Portugal. Will want to win trophies with the Mariners before he leaves. Docker again, low and hard. It pops out here for Nisbet. Intervention from Garuccio. It's going to be a Mariners throw, or is it? Yes. Substitutions here for Western United. Stephen Lustiger to replace Matt Grimaldi. And Luke Vickery for Sebastian Pasquale, who won't look back on today with much fondness. His giveaway, presenting the chance for Josh Nisbet to tee up Max Ballard for what remains the only goal of the game. So Luke Vickery, one of those academy graduates, is on for just his fourth appearance, the 18-year-old. Well, a bit of experience bringing on Stephen Lustica. Perhaps important for John Aloisi's side, just to steady things in the middle of the park. Certainly the most experienced player on the bench today for Western United. Into the final 20 minutes. a good out ball from Dan Hall and Docker will advance into that space between the defensive lines. Angel Torres is left. Driven back. Nisbet. 
leaves it for Torres. Back for Steele. Tap. Forward by Kaltak. Patient again by the Mariners. And Michael Docker going to hit one from long range. Well, we have seen him score a few from outside the box. And so the Mariners prepare to make their second change. Miguel de Pizio is on for Bradley Tapp. And let's go down to Michael Zapponi, who's got a little bit more info on those Western changes. Zappa. at uh, Ashburton uh, in Melbourne, a big junior club and a great program there. And both of them, great to see them both getting their opportunity at A-League men's level. One of the things that John Aloisi has spoken about in, in their position on the ladder at the moment was the fact that uh, they have got a lot of injuries and uh, the chairman came out a few weeks ago, you might remember, and backed John. And sometimes that's not a good thing, but in this case it has been. He said, give them the opportunity, play young boys, and give them the opportunity to play at this level. And uh, we've seen John been doing that in the last month especially. And Luke Vickery, one of those young charges, getting involved in this attacking play. Michael Roos has his shot blocked by Dan Hall. Reset through Garuccio. Docker got a foot in. And it comes last off Ryan Edmondson for a Western throw. Look at all those block shots. That's what the Mariners do so well. Kaltak was brave there, sticking his head in where Angus Thurgate's boot was. And maybe sensible as well, because if he leads with the foot here, Grace, then maybe he's in danger of giving away a penalty. It's smart play. Uh, you can as see well too, as courageous. Yeah, and it does put hesitation into Angus Thurgate's mind. Just he has to withdraw that foot that's hanging out there otherwise. Here's Edmondson looking across the face or complete miscue. And Angel Torres sees his shot. Cannon off the crossbar and back out. Well, a guilt-edged opportunity for the Colombian to make the point safe for the Mariners. Well, it was a gift that was taken away from him the moment it was given to him. Angel Torres smashes the underside of the crossbar. And it's a huge miss there from Kadur at the back post. He'll be so relieved to see that one bounce out of the goal mouth. But at either end, some guilt-edged opportunities. Both sides will rue these missed chances. Nisbet. Rue just nipped in ahead of the defender. Michael Docker, too strong for his opponent. Torres had difficulty initially moving the ball from between his feet. Well, you certainly can't fault Western United's application. Mariners quality perhaps just starting to show through. Torres back for Nisbet. Caltech. Off the head of Rue. Docker gets the loose ball. Ballard. Nisbet. Looking for Storm Rue, and he will reach this one. And it's Edmondson who attacked it, but Western stand firm. Michael Ruse trying to launch a counter, but he's committed the foul. Oh, a good passage there from the Mariners. First of all, Storm Rue does well to hook across into the middle of the box where the Mariners did have good numbers. Dan Hall, just a moment of desperation to keep the ball in their attacking half too. Now change for the Mariners. Christian Thea Harris to replace Harrison Steele. I wonder if that means Michael Docker changing position either to left back or to right back and with Rue going on the left hand side. I'm not sure Christian Thea Harris is a left back. But we'll see. You ready? Back one. 
Meantime, Docker's going to deliver this free kick. Kaltak lying in wait. Mr. Lasky got the touch. Great tack, great tack. It's the small contingent of Mariners fans you can hear in the background. Mark Jackson's put the jacket on. Temperature starting to plunge, but they're enjoying themselves, those travelling fans. I'm sure they'll be going to watch their women's team tomorrow in Melbourne as well. In their finals game. Dockers corner. Back post was Stan Hall. And he got clean contact as well, but straight at Hewitt Bell. Yeah, and as predicted, Michael Docker has got to right fullback now with Stall Rue on the left. That's well, a kind of versatility that Mark Jackson has at his leisure. A mistake by Cadour. Opens the door for Depizio. Torres. Ballard. Michael Docker invited forward from his new more defensive role. Caltech. Rude. Two more changes imminent, as you can see, for Western United. Honor O'Toole and Jake Nadovsky are the next caps off the rank for the green and black. It's a tidy play by Rue. Thea Harris holding off the attentions of Danzaki. Angel Torres. Thea Harris in position to offer support for Torres. Again, they are nice and patient. Mark Jackson's too. Content to keep the ball and perhaps wait for the opening to arrive. Oh, I'm not sure there was an awful lot in that, but uh, Rue went down. Almost invited the decision to be made. Jake Nadovsky then to replace Michael Rue. And Conor O'Toole is on for a tiring Koda Kador. Conor O'Toole, more a left back, really. There's Jake Nadovsky, another one of uh, the young academy graduates. He's making just his fourth senior appearance, the 19 year old. Tool is going to start at uh, right back for Western. And that shots on target stat remains firmly at zero for Western Grace Gill. Riku Danzaki had such a good opportunity. Maybe that's why their energy is better than the Mariners. Meantime, Thea Harris finds the opening. Oh, that's a great goal! That's a stunner from Christian Theoharis. Sending those Mariners fans into ecstasy. And how about the backflips, if you don't mind as well? A really, really super goal from the substitute. And the points are probably now safe for the Mariners. Well, what a moment that is for Christian Theoharis. Streaming forward on the Harvey Norman replay, stops, props, get the sh shot away on his preferred left foot. Just after the substitutes, a little lull in play, Western United settling in after some new players coming on. But that is a stunning hit from Thea Harris. And backflips to boot. You'd think that would all but do it for the Central Coast Mariners. But what a piece of class. Well, back in the States, where he first made his name with Melbourne victory. It's only his third goal of the season, but... Well, for the Mariners at least, that's a goal of the season contender. What a hit. Well, sometimes those sorts of finishes count for a little bit more. 
The Mariners precariously nursing a narrow one goal lead. That second, such a good buffer for the side. And Western really do now have it all to do into the last 10 minutes. Wellington Phoenix will no doubt be rather disappointed. All their good work against Melbourne Victory. To no avail if it stays this way in terms of the league standings at least. Two more games still to play, of course, but Mariners will be back on top of the league tonight if they see out this win in Tarni. Well, it came just after the substitutes, John Aloisi emptying his bench. And just as play restarted. Let's see if Weston can get on the board here. Dan Zaki. Cut back, cleared up field by Rue. Nice and composed by Docker. Nice, good header one by Edmondson. And Thea Harris down the right. Buoyed by that splendid goal. Uh, don't go overboard, Christian. <laughs> uh, chilly day, but that goal will have warmed the heart of Mark Jackson. Before their long trip to Bishkek during the week. To Australia to face Adelaide United. Their penultimate home game. Same club who were due in Tarnit, of course, on Tuesday. Looking to keep alive their faint hopes of a final spot after the late loss to MacArthur last evening. Here's Ryan Edmondson, narrow angle. Good effort, good save. Clean tackle on Fergate. And the Mariners come again. Torres, Depizio. Good save again by Hewitt Bell. Two inside a minute. Well, they're really starting to stream forward now, aren't they? And the game just opening up a bit as well. Perhaps a few tired legs, lapsing concentration. Certainly the Mariners have been allowed a little bit more time and space just to get a shot away. Well, Western keep trying. Nothing wrong with their effort today, but just lacking a little bit of quality in front of goal. Danzaki. Back through Garuccio. Lustica available. Back by Thurgate for Lesolaski and now Donaghy. Now they will cross through Garuccio. It's just catching practice for Danny Vukovic, who's within sight of clean sheet number 101 in the Isuzu A League men's competition. distribution though from the former soccer route and Docker bundled over by Garuccio which he thinks is a bit soft well we'll see this now from the Mariners just slowing things down starting to tick away at the final five minutes of regulation time there is a little shove on Michael Docker 
big talking point for Weston, no doubt, will be the non-award of that penalty. They have not really been able to put Danny Vukovic under sustained pressure, and Christian Theoharis, with that wonderful goal, has leapt right to the top of the Paramount Plus player index standings. Ahead of his uh, goal-scoring teammate, Max Ballard. Here's Depizio, Nisbet, Torres. They're queuing up again here, the Mariners. Angel Torres, a good recovery by Conor O'Toole at the expense of a corner. Well, he's hustled hard all game, hasn't he, Angel Torres? Conor O'Toole having to be up to task and was. Torres probably should have made it too before Christian Thea Harris actually did touch a cramp for James Donerkey. Here we go, here we go. It's the corner driven hard and flat, palmed away by Hewitt Bell. A reset through Thea Harris, similar sort of delivery. Not yet away for Weston. Wales going cross field. Garuccio. Thurgate. Heavy first touch. been that sort of a an afternoon for Western United moments of promise but not much more yeah exactly right and you can't take that away from them either they have had some really bright moments some good forward movements the patterns have been there just that final product lacking from Western United well protected by Edmonton Nisbet not got a lot of help, but hasn't he done well, Josh Nisbet? Lucky Wales down on the floor and not in a position to receive that pass. Eventually finds the favour of Jonathan Barrero. Although he didn't in the first half when he was booked for simulation. We're told VAR are checking something. It was a pretty quick check. Oh, quick Any checks, clues, Grace? A quick check's a good check, Simon. <laughs> That's okay. the normal 90. And the Mariners one step closer to the first leg of a possible treble. who was just eased away by Max Ballard. Jonathan Barrero right on the spot. Late free kick for Weston. Yeah, Barrero has the best view of that there, and Ballard just lunges at the challenge. Garuccio, really good driving run forward, trying to create something late in the match. Into the first of four additional minutes at the end of the 90. And given the lack of shots on Danny Vukovic's goal, I reckon they've got to have a hit here. Lockie Wales to leave it, Ben Garuccio. Worth a go. And they are going to get a corner out of it. 
Still yet to register a shot on target, but they'll take the corner. They'll look to create. Perhaps even if a consolation goal, they won't mind. Danny Vukovic wants that clean sheet. Garuccio's delivery helped on by Danzaki at the near post. But there was nobody at the far post to apply the finishing touch. Well, agonisingly close for Western United and the reaction there from Lockie Wales. Well, says it all. Oh, so close. But just not having that final touch. Nice delivery by Garuccio. And then uh, Wales did get a little touch on it. Danzaki, first of all. James Donachy was a metre or two away. Western's final three games. They've got Adelaide here on Tuesday and then trips to Perth, which could be a wooden spoon decider. And then the short hop to face Melbourne City at Amy Park. It's neat work from Ryan Edmondson. Long by Vukovic, one in the air by O'Toole. Lustica can't reach it. Nisbet. Docker. Dan Hall happy to run down the clock for a few more seconds. Ball breaks for Nisbet. the better of his defender. Didn't quite pick out Papizio, but he's got the wherewithal to win the ball back. Nisbet. Turned back by Thea Harris for Ballard. And Miguel. Again, a uh, spell in possession for the Mariners. As they run down the clock. Worthy winners today, Grace, the Mariners. Yeah, I think it's fair to say they've taken their chances when they have been presented. And in a match that's been a bit of an arm wrestle and a cagey affair, they've made the most of those moments. Torres not giving this one up. And there goes the full-time whistle. Wellington Phoenix asked the question yesterday. Today, the Mariners provide the answer. Back to the top of the league they go, with just two to play. Now it's on to Kyrgyzstan for the next leg of their possible treble. Max Ballard with the opening goal, his second in three games. And then Christian Theoharis with an absolute stunner off the bench to secure all three points. Western United huffed and puffed, but they could not trouble Danny Vukovic today. A much depleted Western United. They lose for the first time at their new venue here in Tarnit. They will welcome Adelaide on Tuesday, but before that, they'll be watching Perth Glory's results against Melbourne City with trepidation tomorrow in their bid to avoid the wooden spoon. But it's finished here this afternoon. Western United nil, Central Coast Mariners two. Christopher Harris, that was sensational, uh, that goal. Uh, seen you score a few uh, in your career. Was that one of your better ones? 
Um, yeah, look, I'd like to add more goals, obviously. But, um, nah, yeah, obviously the gaffer gives us certain structures and certain rules to oblige by, and it just gives us freedom in the front third to do what we can do. And, um, yeah, he gives us a belief and he trusts in us, which is nothing like I can't ask for more, really. Tell us a little bit about this afternoon, because it was a tough uh, slog in the first half especially. Did you change anything specifically coming into that second half? Um, no, we, we obviously we went in at half-time, not, not, not with the best performance. But um, we had to look at ourselves, Gaff had a few words and just said, obviously we've got a lot at stake right now and um, the boys have done brilliantly all season. And he just said, turn it up 10, 10 15%. And um, yeah, I guess that's what we did. We came out, did the basics right and of course we ended up coming out with the result. That was really noticeable, especially at the recommencement uh, of the second half. The intensity seemed to lift up. Was it really a, 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 a talking about what's at stake here this afternoon and knowing there's a couple of games go and you could win the Premier's plate? Yeah, of course. On, um, there's nothing more you want to do but play for trophies, really. And credit to the lads today and um, turning around the second half and um, obviously, again, believing in their structures and the way we play. Um, Vuka always says, make sure if we lose or win, we play our way. And um, that's what we did in the second half and obviously across the result. Good to see you, mate. Well done. Thank you, mate. Take care. All right, Christian Thea Harris, a former Western United player and Melbourne victory man as well. well Lockie Wales. Lockie, thanks for joining us, mate. A tough afternoon. Uh, a little bit different to last week here. Yeah, I thought, to be fair, this week we were pretty good in the first half. Um, we had a few chances. We had them camped down here and, you know, seemed to have the intensity. And then, oh, second half was complete disappointment, to be honest, Zappers. We, we were flat and he allowed good players like Nisbet in the pockets and Ballard and... Mate, they gave us a run around the second half and we just weren't at, weren't at the races in the second half and it's disappointing in, in front of our home fans where last week we ran over the top of the Bulls in the second half. So uh, we've got to bounce back quick against Adelaide and, and, and you know, there's plenty of positives there, but um, yeah, too good in the end, Central Coast. The chances were few and far between. Did create one good one with uh, Dan Zaki almost uh, putting it in and sometimes it's just those little moments that can change games. Yeah, it's been like, I think it's been like that the whole season, those little moments. Um, you know, those chances in both boxes, um, you know, they were clinical and, you know, we had them half chances where, where you know, if we go in, it changes the game. And uh, again, positives to the club. We got young boys here. Um, we got our new facility uh, and there's plenty to be positive about. But, um, yeah, to be honest, up as, as a more experienced player, the second half was a bit disappointing and uh, the, the game became too stretched and uh, they got quality players and they, they hurt us. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers, Uppers. Cheers. All right, uh, plenty more to come uh, after the break. Uh, don't go away because we've got more of our post-game show right after this. <laughs>